have you had a problem with people trying to make you into something you're not and you're like, I refuse to do that because it's against my morals? Thankfully, I haven't actually encountered that fully. So, I mean, when I did the X Factor, the only thing that was really maybe conflicting was that, like, they're like, okay, now we want you to cry, like, right now, so that, you know, everyone's going to love this. I'm like, I don't feel like crying. Like, I'm happy. Like, I just made it to the next round. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. So, oh, you know what? You should have freaking cried. Look, see, this I know, is how right? I know you're Crying cells. Yo, crying you should have cried. You should have cried. Oh, my gosh. I'm waiting for my moment to get to cry, you know? <laughs> George cries, like, on a dime. I, I finally can cry. It was a, it took me a while to get here. Now I finally dropped my pride, opened up my emotions, and I cry. And it's a great feeling. And by, by it took him a while to get there. He's been crying since he was 13. He's oh. just, he cries. He I just took cries. a break. I really? took a break. Bambi? You forget Bambi? There's a difference cry? between crying and tearing up, bro. Okay. Let's yeah, right. differentiate. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll talk about that off air. So, Shalom, do you feel like as a high school student, your religion... Because I'm feeling like you're more religious too, right? Yeah, totally. I think as a high school student, it's like, it's it's a weird place to be because everyone at school is like super, like against like religion. They're like, oh no, like just, you know, just take another shot or oh here, like have some weed, you know, we're just smoking in the back, no one knows. And I'm like, oh, like, I don't know. You know, and it's like when you stand up for like what you believe in, you're the most unpopular person in the room. And so I think as a high school student, it's really hard, but it's, also like not so hard because it's like whoa like you kind of set a standard and a respect for yourself where people's like oh yeah like i know her like she's solid like you can't mess with her you know and it's it's cool but it's also kind of like not people, cool yeah it's cool, but it's also not cool <laughs> totally like, it's like you're popular but you're a loser i get it <laughs> it's like you're popular but don't invite you're me to your party po most popular loser who never gets invited <laughs> to anything like everyone's like hi shalom don't tell shalom <laughs> like do people think you like judge them all the time no, to be honest, I have I don't walk around campus like, oh, I'm a Christian. Like, I don't think a lot of people know. A lot of people think I'm Jewish because I wear this star. And they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, like, my Jew, you know? I'm like, yeah. yeah, for sure, you know? And it's like, unless someone approaches me, it's like, hey, what do you think about this? I'm not really going to be like, like, be so blunt. You're not going to be like, well, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to be like, you're going to burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, George's dad is a pastor. Seriously. Wow. My, yeah, my, my dad's a pastor. I, a pastor I started in the hip hop genre. So I remember just growing up in church, only being exposed to church music and the hymns and all that and gospel. And I was actually like dropping bars in my closet, like recording a song. And it, like, you know, when you're really feel, you're a musician. So, you know, when you're really feeling a take and you're like, yo, I got this. You're halfway through. And then all you hear is a boom, boom, boom on the door. It's like, what is this music? It is ungodly. What is this street music? And it was like this huge conflict with my father, him wanting me to incorporate God in my music versus me doing you know, the popular approach. And I remember like the moment where I finally finished my CD and my dad rolled up to church with it. He's like, do you want to buy my son's CD? He was like so proud, you know what I'm saying? So I did. And then they listened to it and then they, yeah, then, and then, then my father disowned out of the house. Oh, but out. the point is, the point <laughs> is, um, there is this pressure I feel, you know, music shouldn't really be boxed, right? You're a musician, you're an artist. You should be able to just go on a canvas sonically and create whatever you want but then there's this pressure because you're feeling like am i going against the good word am i going against my religion by simply trying to pursue my dreams and i do believe in the music industry and i want to ask that have either of you reached like a crossroads where you feel like you're making a decision one or the other yeah, that was a lot. Wait, say that. Say that last. It was a lot. Part. So, have, have either of you reached a crossroads now in your music careers, mm -hmm. where you feel like you have to kind of pick between God and music, or pick a genre? Let's see. I don't. I don't think so because, like, the way I see it is that, like, the world we live on, live in, it's not like, oh, like, I'm only gonna obey God and like do what He says, and then like, but we live in the world at the same time, you know. So it's hard to like always be consistent in that sense. But so with music, I see it as like, you don't just take one out and the other, like God and then music don't go together. Like, I think that who you are, it just comes out through your music. So I can't help it that, you know, like my, I don't know, it's my relationship with God, it just comes out of my music. Do so. you feel that if you have a song with God in it, it's has less of a chance to do well on radio? 
I don't know. I mean, Drake wrote God's Plan. I think that's doing pretty good. <laughs> I don't know if God's Plan and Christian. I do think, remember that one song? What if God was one of us? Bling, 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 bling. <laughs> Just a stranger on the... You guys don't know the no, song? Bling, 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 that song about. used to be so hot. It was such a cute song. And then you, you check it out. When did and that come out? Had, it was like Punk? a big deal. Like That was a big deal. And then the, When did it come out? Yeah. It came out in like... Before Tron and I were alive, it's like our parents showed it to us. No, no, no. And, uh, we were, we were, we were kids, but it came out in like the 90s. It oh, I was born in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, see? <laughs> but we were more kid and you were more baby. Yeah, More definitely. toddler. Yeah, you were like, you were, you were, you were like diapers. Yeah. And we were like, hey, when, what time are we going to college? Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like Kanye, he broke no, out, but Kanye no, broke out with Jesus Walks and everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's a huge record. It did it. But then we didn't hear any of that afterwards. Mm. And it's like, did, did Kanye himself have to switch back to what the genre wanted? And if you're tuning in now, the reason we're talking so much religious talk is not because we've just changed our theme of our show to religion, but because we are talking about religion and how it affects your everyday life and your relationships because we do have two people who I consider pretty religious. Talia, Talia goes to the church like every week. Like, like every day. No one's kidding. But, she, <laughs> but you do. So we're going to ask you a series of questions of either or just to get a better feel for who you are as people. And it's very simple. Pick one or the, or other. the other. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Very simple. Yeah. Okay. Church on Wednesday or church on Sunday? He took my question, bro. Wednesday. 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 Wednesday, Wednesday church is popping. Yeah. Wednesday yeah. church is popping. It's pop. nighttime. Like, All right. It's better. Praying alone or praying with a group? Praying alone. Alone. Totally alone. Totally. 100. Yeah. Better. Yeah. yeah, someone prayed for me once and then I hurt my leg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Driving in a convertible by the beach or... In a Jeep with all the window, like all the doors and stuff off, also by the beach. Convertible? Jeep. What? I can put my surfboard in a Jeep. You start turning, you, you, you start telling who, are you? who you really are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jeeps. Convertible. Jeep. Convertible. All right. Sorry. Uh, Lord, forgive me. Uh, marijuana or alcohol? Uh, oh, snap. Neither? Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Why? We corrupted them. <laughs> um,. I guess alcohol Why? is legal, but see, so I take it and like put it in like my steak. Yeah, like, put in some steak. It. No, we're, we're not pasta. talking no. Co- <laughs> no we're not talking listen. communion. When you, the way you said alcohol, we oh know God. what you meant. Okay. No. But, but that's the thing. It's not like uh, having alcohol is not anti-religious. Yeah. It, depending totally. on your religion. Yeah. I, I personally have never drank in my life. So I've never oh. drank, smoked, done drugs, nothing. Right. But that's not because of religious reasons. I just a I, I have a control problem, and b I. I'm like this sober. So, like, I wear a bathrobe. Do you really <laughs> want to see me drunk? Like, is that something, like, if I'm high, am I... Well, at that point, I'm just homeless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, naps or eight hours sleep? Eight hours sleep. Eight hours sleep. Hour sleep. Like, like but a good too. nap though, like a good nap. You ever oh. take a, like a good oh, nap? Maybe a nap, like a then. like a power nap, like a nap yeah. where you wake up just feeling like. Teron, they decided. You know what? I like you know naps. The problem is that it's in the middle of the day, and I feel like I should be doing something. You know, like yeah. it's like I feel like I lost time. Like mm. eight hours, just get those eight hours or ten, twelve. <laughs> like, oh my god, like me. <laughs> I woke up at eleven or ten, twelve. <laughs> so I just don't want to know that I'm not doing anything. Uh, okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would you rather work out in the gym or go hiking? Go hiking. Gym. Why? Because there's people around, and so I'm like, oh, I can't stop running now because they're watching me, you know? I'd rather go hiking because no one's around so I can stop (laughs) if I want. (laughs) See, I'm telling you, you learn a lot about people. Okay. (laughs) Dress like a sundress or pants, like nice pants. 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 Like pants. Dresses, you have to be really, like, proper, you know? You have to, like, sit all a certain way. Like, pants are comfy. Like, you don't got to worry about nothing. That's <laughs> true. Pants every day. Leggings, I prefer leggings. Yeah. Sweats. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, tall, there you go. <laughs> yeah. First date, man shows up in basketball shorts, or first date, man shows up in a full tuxedo. Full tuxedo. Full tuxedo. Full tuxedo. Full tuxedo. Your appearance shows how much, like, you value, like, the person you're going to meet. Like, totally. if you show up in, what, shorts? Like, 
What if you showed up who in are a bathrobe? No, like, bathrobe? Basically, basically who, who are you? Are you? <laughs> she just said that. <laughs> who are, are you? you? That's that's basically who are you? Okay. Well, so I feel like we get a better feel for who you are now. Yeah. And where are you guys from originally? Sherman from LA. Oaks. Yeah. yeah. Same LA. thing. Yeah. Sherman, Sherman Oaks. Oaks. California. Yeah. And now you're from Sherman Oaks. So because a lot of people are are all travelers to LA. Mm -hmm. Very few people are from Los Angeles, but you guys are actually original. Yeah, Los Angeles Nito Nitos. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I, I need to know this. Has has being from Los Angeles helped you in your entertainment careers? Definitely, because like, like everybody knows somebody, and you grew up around. You know, the casting directors are your neighbors, and your best friend, like her dad's, like a music producer. Like you just, like everybody's like family, and so it definitely like helps. And also, you know, every place like. You just grow up in the industry. Like my dad, like he did special effects, so we were always, you know, going to studios and stuff. So I mean, I think it helps because you get an idea of you're just living in the industry, basically. Does, does Shalom want to be in this industry too, or no? So what do you want to do? <laughs> I want to be a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shalom, <laughs> hold up. I thought Shalom. Like first of all, when I walked in, I thought you were a collaborative religious rap group, like oh a gosh. Jew and a Christian. <laughs> And then I heard you were doing music. So, so are you a singing doctor or? You <laughs> no, not at all. She doesn't oh. sing. Nope. Oh, okay. That's she's what like I was math, saying. and I'm like music. reading. She's, she's like cake, and I'm like tacos. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, totally. cake and tacos aren't opposite. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Like, I don't think cake and tacos. I'm like the cake and tacos, and she's like the kill and spinach. You know, one time <laughs> we're hungry. <laughs> I had a situation where I, I asked this Mexican girl, she wanted to get tacos, and she's like, why, because I'm Mexican? I was oh. like, no, I like tacos, but yes, that did play a little <laughs> part into why. And then she was like, well, what if I asked you, let's go get watermelon? And I, oh, snap. And I was like, I don't think that's exactly the same thing. Black people didn't invent watermelon. Like, we didn't go out of our way. You people mm -hmm. invented tacos. Like, it's tacos true. didn't exist. It's not like tacos grow in the ground and they're delicious, right? You guys mm -hmm. were like, this is what we're going to do with our our tortilla. We're going mm -hmm. to add meat, add some cilantro. You're making me hungry, man. Then, <laughs> so I just thought that was an interesting segue into what you were saying oh, yeah. about how tacos and cake, and you thought they were opposites. I think I think they are. She's like more like Mexican, and I'm just more like she's more black. Yeah. <laughs> but is that your mix, though? Is it black and Mexican? We're black, and Mexican, Italian, Italian, and German. And yeah. Wow. Um, being part Mexican, were you offended when Trump <laughs> celebrated Cinco de Mayo with a taco bowl? I did not know I that didn't until know about right that. now. <laughs> um, but I don't know if that's offensive. I like, what did he eat? <laughs> taco bowl. I like tacos. What do you mean taco the Trump bowl? Towers. Um, it's like a, it's a tortilla shell and then all the tacos. Oh, everyone celebrates Cinco de Mayo, right? No? Is that not a thing? I don't know. Oh I'm gosh. not offended. I like food, so if there's food involved, hey, yeah. So how important <laughs> is relate is religion when it comes to relationships for you? On a scale of one to ten, how important is that religious factor? That's a good question. It's a good one. Um, I think it's super important because say like a ten. Super important isn't a number, yeah. Super important. Um, <laughs> wait. Oh, is that? Did you say between one, one and ten? ten? Oh. I missed that part. Ten. <laughs> it's a ten. Yeah. So you would never. So basically, you have to be with someone who's super religious. Well, not super religious. I guess like in terms of like it depends if you mean like like a dating relationship or like a friendship. Because I feel like with friendships, like friendship, it's like friendship zero. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Zero. You don't have to like we're friends. Be I mean, friends with someone. It's not like you're, like if you're gonna marry somebody. I mean, it's a big deal. You have to kind of figure out you know if you guys are on the same page about a lot of things. But friendships, I think it's zero. I, I think. think that's heavy one. Christian. <laughs> just what? Nothing. What did you say? <laughs> I said I don't think it matters if like your friends are and aren't Christians because you can be the influencer in the relationship. When it comes to like dating and marriage, I think it's important that whoever you choose to like basically spend your life with should be on the same page because it's going to be a lot harder to like pull them to be like, hey, come with me to church, you know? Like, they're like I'm not about that. But I mean, if you're not on the same page, I mean, it depends how you guys work together and you know work things out. So. But do you think it would be like would it be a factor? For you to not date someone, like you meet someone, you like adore them. This mm -hmm. is someone who's, oh my gosh, I really feel a connection. And then you find out that they are Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, spiritual, Dallas, spiritual, LA, spiritual. 
I think Jewish is like okay for me. Like Jewish, Jewish okay, or spiritual, <laughs> you know, or like maybe even Muslim. I'd be like, okay, you know, like let's go to church together. Let's see oh how you gosh. like. It. But like, I plan on marrying a Jew, so it doesn't matter to me. But why? Yeah. Why is that? Well, besides the <laughs> fact that your name is Shalom, why do you? And the obvious benefits in Hollywood. What are the real reasons that you <laughs> want to marry a Jew? Um, definitely, just because like if you read in the Bible, it says that like God put His blessing on them since like forever. And you definitely see it. Like, almost every Jew you meet, in my personal opinion, they're, like, super blessed. Or, like, they're doing well. And I'm like, I want to be with someone like that. So, <laughs> so have saying. you considered Judaism? <laughs> no. I, oh my <laughs> I mean, I'm a messianic Jew, so it's it's similar, oh. you know? Yeah. This is fun. What about you guys? <laughs> yeah, what about I mean, you? You know, I don't know how important religion is to me specifically, but I can't say it's unimportant, right? So I would I would love to be like, oh, it's not a factor. But I guess it possibly is a factor, especially as I get older and more serious about if I'm dating someone, then this could be the thing. And it's something that a lot of people don't put in perspective. Coming from a mixed background, you realize no one thinks it's important until you have a child and then you want your child to go to heaven. And your direction of how to get to heaven differs. So it becomes a question of, wait, now the, now the child isn't reflecting what I think. It, it's something I actually heard very interesting is, and it was from The Simpsons like a long time ago. Homer's was like, having a child is great. You get to teach them to hate what I, what I hate. You know, you get to mm-hmm. teach them what hate what you hate. And basically it just means that you get to program this person to be the person you want them to be a reflection of you. And how do you do that when you don't have a clear cut direction and religion, and I'm coming from a person who has a very, a very varied religious background when it comes to my family. So it's just interesting. It's an interesting thing. I don't know if there's there's any religion that I could say no to, but yeah, I would care a little. <laughs> I, I would like someone who's kind of religious, because I'm not gonna do it, right? So I'm like, yo, <laughs> teach teach oh teach the uh, teach the kid the kid. You mean? Our son, whatever. Teach, teach. <laughs> That's just how I would go. What, George? <laughs> Are you observing my silence? Yeah, I want to hear this. This is a very sensitive subject for me. Yeah, because... You know what happened. You were trying to make me cry again. <laughs> okay. You know, I was in college. The love <laughs> of... Uh, the lady who I thought was the love of my life <laughs> was of a different religion. <laughs> what religion, George? She was Muslim. <laughs> Halfway into her senior year of college. Parents, Hold on, but where, where was she from? Where was she from? Bangladesh. She was from Bangladesh. Nice, nice country near India. Okay. Yes. It, it's the south of India. It's basically. And halfway into her senior year of college, parents found. How serious were her family? Was her family about religion? George? Pretty serious. Pretty serious. Like life or death serious. And, and who wow. told you that this could not end well? Tehran. Okay. I just want to make sure yeah. we have a. We have a clear-cut understanding of what happened. So then what happened? Halfway into senior year in college, parents came to visit, met the parents. Her parents came from Bangladesh, by the way. <laughs> to visit. So, so what she, I thought was, was like, like a, a nice... She was like an exchange student or whatever. She'd only been here. She'd been learning English. She learned English. She was like... But you, you wouldn't have known that when you met her. You could tell she had an accent, but you would have thought, oh, she was just like raised here, but not born here. But she definitely had just come here. Her yep. parents had definitely just sent her to this amazingly good school... And then, <laughs> and I thought I was meeting the parents for like introdu- being introduced to the family for consideration of marriage. Had a nice dinner. <laughs> the next morning, I went to. By pick- the way, hold on. No, you're not setting that. So, in dinner, he, she like tried to bring extra people. So, it looked like it looked like he was just a friend, right? So, she but tried she to blend it in. She tried to friend. blend it in. Okay. So, she brought extra, extra people. And I'm at the dinner just dying. Like, I'm having the best time ever. <laughs> he okay. was, like, really enjoying the pie. You loved that pie there. Yeah, I was just chilling. I didn't eat any of the food, but but the pie was amazing. Because I like to know what's in my food specifically. Mm-hmm. All right. So George is there, and he's trying not to be. He's trying to be as polite. I've never seen George. Oh, let me help you with the dishes, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's how I was raised. Uh, brother mowed the lawn, I did the dishes. Anyways, um, so the next morning, went to pick her up for school like I typically did. Pick her up for class. Called, no answer. Uh, knocked on the door, no answer. And this continued for about two weeks. Didn't know where she was. No. 
I, he I was, was dying. He was dying. And I was calling to Tehran. He, he, he wanted to call the police. He thought she was kidnapped. Oh I didn't know what happened. And every time I tried to talk to Tehran, he would just smirk and laugh. I mean, what kind of help is that? What kind of help is that? I mean, because to me, it was... And, and then sounds, I got it, you know, it was amusing. Funny. It was a little amusing. So yeah, it sounds pretty entertaining. After two weeks of Tehran... Especially, so, look, look at him. Look how big he is. You know what I'm saying? And he's just like... <laughs> Oh Where do you gosh. think he is? Where do you think she is? Come on, you're exaggerating a little, a little bit. A little. That's cute. You and, care. Um, you so care. Two weeks in, was on the way to class. No. Same thing happening. Two weeks of Tehran's laughter. I got a call. The call was from a... Two weeks of Tehran's laughter. 1-800 number. No, it wasn't a 1-800 number. It was like... It was star 497432962116614. It had like... It just went But forever. you assume it's a bill collector. That's a 1-800 number in my book. Yeah. So I ignored it three times on the fourth time I answered. And all I hear is... Well, answered roughly too, though. I was like, hello? And then all I hear is, George? George? And then I was like... No, do the accent, bro. George? 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 It is I. George? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my God, how are you? And she says, I am married. Oh my gosh. What? I did my, not see my that. My girlfriend, oh. the love of my life, my, my future gosh. fiance. Her parents took her away from the United States. Oh my gosh. Arranged the marriage and had her married off because she was dating George. And they somehow figured out from their distant interaction. You know when you're like trying to hide your relationship so you act even more distant mm -hmm. as if everyone's just paying attention and they weren't? Yeah. Yeah, that's how, that's how George and her were acting apparently and the parents picked up on it. Oh By God. the way, parents loved me. Loved me. <laughs> Why did they like you so they much? Loved, I was just like, I was even, I was like, gurta, 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 gurta. And they loved me. They yeah, were laughing. Just... just loved me so much. They're like, Tehran is such a good, we have so many oh, he's your cousins. You want a cousin? Like oh my God. And at one point, he like even tapped on her dad's turban and he's laughing. <laughs> and I just was like, gurta, gurta, gurta. <laughs> And he left. He didn't have a turban, but he had like a little thing on his head. And, like, then, they, and then they hated me. They, oh. they didn't hate Joe. You know, yeah, they did. Because they took their little. Because so, so you're the, so nice. They took and little and so, just, so the point is, so this was a very crazy. traumatizing experience for me. And I will say that as an effect of this, I do But your have, parents didn't like it either, though, George. You're. Your your dad, my you know dad what? Is your, a mom is, your mom is a very open minded mm -hmm. person, and your mom just wants you to f love. And I don't know if that goes the same for you guys. Yeah. Is is it like you, your parents are strict and religious, or did you guys no. bring that upon yourselves? No, my parents aren't like super strict at all. They're not at all. <laughs> they're just like, they're super chill. Uh, so you're just out all types of night, and they're just like, yeah. Well, I don't know. They really trust us, so. Yeah, they, I don't know. They're just like, okay, they're bye. the best. Like, uh, I sure. sound like they're sweet, like, like so chill. They're just, <laughs> yeah, they don't care. I mean, they leave it. They, they really leave it don't. up to us, really, because like yeah. whatever you want to do, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, they do like, care. If you, but, if you brought yeah. someone home of a different religion, would your parents be upset about it? Oh, um, what if, if you, you were home, like, like a nice Muslim boy, um, I think they'd just be like with tattoos <laughs> on his neck. <laughs> They'd be like, let's start praying. Zayn Malik? <laughs> I'd be okay with that. No. <laughs> Yo, she has the, a I do love Zayn Malik. Uh, no. Okay. Back to the question. I don't, I don't know. They're pretty They're pretty chill. I mean, I feel like they just like, want to get to know him. Yeah, they just want to get to know somebody. They're yeah. just very open-minded in, yeah. totally. in that regard. Oh, yeah. But if you brought home someone who wasn't Christian, would your parents be okay with that? I mean, they're okay with it. because yeah. like they just want to get to know them. Yeah. yeah it's like, about you. Would you want to convert that person? I want to convert them. Yeah, well, it um, at the so beginning, it sounds crazy. I mean, I don't date to convert. Like, I don't believe in like missionary dating. Like, <laughs> I'm crazy. dating them so they get saved. Now, is there a thing? Missionary that's a dating? thing. Yeah, you people are like, oh, friends. I'm dating this boy. So, fact, like, he's all of our friends are like, oh yeah, like even though he's an atheist, like I'm gonna change him. And I'm like, I'm gonna change him. That. Like, you don't like that's not how you like, change. That's not why you date like, someone. No, uh, yeah, I think really that's all dating is is changing. Like you're trying to change me. Like that's but it never works. Oh, and everybody like, oh. to change them. Yeah, I think you have to let someone like you know be them. figure out their own path and yeah. stuff. It's really supportive. like your choice if you want to be a part of that or not. Yeah, I, I don't date people to change them. No way, no. it's not my job. I feel like it's, it's right. God's job to change someone's heart. Totally. I can't, I can't do that. So uh, here's an even more difficult question: Do you find true love? Yeah. And then that person says, "In order to marry me, you have to convert to my religion." Good question. Um. 
Which is Snap. Satanism. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You believe in Balthazar? Oh my, oh my gosh. Um, you have to Snap. I, I mean, would question if it's true love. Because if you like truly love someone, you're not going to like tell them. Well, I'm so sorry, Shalom, and I'm going to tell you this no, because you want to marry a blessed Jew, but okay. those blessed Jews okay. don't want to marry someone who's not yeah. a blessed Jew. Okay. So, especially since it, it's handed down through the mother's bloodline, mm -hmm. and it'd be like, yeah, you'd have to convert. Yeah, I guess that plan's kind of in the trash now. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. I don't know. Um, oh, that's so hard. It's so hard. Would you be like, yeah, I'd convert, and then secretly. Lord Jesus, forgive me. No, I just think I'd probably just walk away from it. I'd be like, you know what? It was just a like, stupid thought. You know, like, oh. you know, this is what I was thinking. You'd, you'd be like, you know what? Thank <laughs> Nice ring. <laughs> stupid thought is just not really working for me. Yeah, totally not. Because you want to be in a relationship where you're, like, free to, like, be who you want to be. And it's like if someone's like, oh, you have to, like, live like this or you have to follow my rules. And it's like, okay, that doesn't sound, like, fun or it doesn't sound like so let's say you marry someone who's Jewish and then you, you're Christian and you want, and you guys have a child. Now, what do you raise that child? Um, it's Messianic Jew. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> no. That's actually a pretty reasonable. Right? Like, I mean, it's yeah. in between. It's like Christianity and Ju Jewism. Like, I mean, together. it's Judeo Christian principles. Like, that's how. Totally. I don't know. It's just, it comes together. So nicely, there's the Torah, then there's the New Testament, and Jesus you know, was Jewish. That's really good branding, Judeo Christian, because it leaves out Islam. The, no, I noticed. <laughs> so, what I noticed when they said that is I, I came to terms with the term when I heard the politicians use it a lot. Yeah, it's Judeo Christian, even though it's really like Islam supposed to be the third branch of that, like right there attached. And then people are like, eh, we don't really <laughs> like how they're doing it right now, you know? Like, ah, the beards are cool, but other than that. <laughs> We're not on board. Who knows? But you, but you would date someone who you met at church. Is that like mm. is that like a founding <laughs> thing that you go to church for? No, no. I not think a chance. I feel like church is like a hospital. You know, there's a lot of broken people that go, and because we all need help. <laughs> I mean, so if you're going to find somebody, that's why you're going to church. Like. Like, they're not going to be perfect, that's for sure, because we're all going there because we, we need a little bit of help. Full imperfect people. Full <laughs> imperfect people. So, I mean, I don't think you go to find somebody. Like, I think, honestly, I don't but know. But do you get hit on at church? Yeah, all the time. Because you're a Christian. They're like, oh, Christian girl, oh, my gosh. Like, she's the one because she's like, a Christian. Come they to my Bible out. study. Here, I'll text yeah. you your number. I'll text you the number. Like, and then yeah. how do you feel about that? Like, is that, like, an inappropriate place to for a guy to hit on you? No, I don't think so. I mean, like... It just happens so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. I think it's just like, I don't think it's weird. You know? It's like, just funny. Like, oh, she's a Christian. Oh my gosh, I have to date her. Like, calm, like, calm down. Like, I'm not here for you. I don't here. think it's just because you're Christian. You're also very cute. So there's oh, like, stop like, it. if you weren't no. cute, I don't really think, like, I don't see, like, I see some girls and I don't think people are hitting on them at church. Like, oh yeah, hey, Bertha. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Oh, you they're know, not like Bertha's a Christian girl. Got a <laughs> oh date Yeah, That's you funny. know, another thing I observed, especially in the Middle East, a lot of people just meet at weddings. It's like, oh, two people are getting married, then I'm just going to the wedding and meet Well, somebody. weddings aren't just the Middle East. Weddings are popping places to meet people in general. Because it's like, it's uh, you're also at the best. It's a fun time. Have you ever, uh, this, this question is for Toronto. Have you ever crashed a wedding? Yeah. Oh yeah, yo! There was this whole summer. I did a series with this uh, with this guy out of here called Vedding Crashers, and we went and crashed all these Persian weddings. <laughs> I would just go to a Persian wedding and like literally go in and just start dancing with the bride. Or do <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And it was Vedding Crashers. Oh my god, do that! It was so fun. It's really like fun. When you crash a wedding, you're not supposed to dance with the bride. You're yo, to we dance were the dancing guests, bro. all up on the bride. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Oh, my god! Uh, you know what? I've never... The whole concept, I guess, through marrying through religion, right, is because you bring God into the relationship. And I never really thought of it in that way. And I guess as I do get more experience, not older, just more experience, <laughs> I start seeing a value in that. Just a simple concept of, hey, let's bring a greater power into this relationship so when we do feel weak, we do have our weak moments, and we do fall apart, there's this unifying glue that brings us back together. And my problem with uh, thinking about that and dating or marrying someone is 
I, like I think everybody's glue works to some extent, you know? So it's, it's difficult that there's this division amongst religion when, why can't your glue work on me? And why can't my glue work on you? But it just, unfortunately, it, it's a little more complicated than that in society. And um, I would be interested to see, to go that route. So I know you ain't going to church to date or get married. I would be interested as a social experiment or love to to try that because I think it might be better than you're saying church has broken people. The club has a lot of broken people too. And that's where we meet people on clubs and apps. You know, maybe yeah. we should try it. Yeah. Hey, I'm not against it. I mean, if I don't, I don't know, whatever floats your boat. I mean, <laughs> that's just Yeah. I don't know. So where's the best place to meet someone? Hmm. I don't know, just go outside. I mean, there's a lot of people <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I don't know, there's like a specific yeah, place. Yeah, that mean, sounds like a great way to get rich. Yeah, like, that's <laughs> not really... I'm not really you should meet Hollywood. someone. I mean, yeah. that could be anyone. Um, I don't I think know. school, like if you're in college, that's a good place to meet someone. I mean, I don't know. I'm in college right now and I'm meeting a lot of cool people. So. She's in high school and college, so she's yeah. doing both. That's why she said So that. you're meeting a lot of guys in college? Yeah, that's illegal. <laughs> that's I mean, illegal. Like, we're just friends, okay? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I mean, I just... You can go anywhere. I don't know. Someone's... I mean, I set I, you I, up. I right? definitely say, like, don't, like, factor out church. Like, I think church is a good place to meet people. I'd just be like, don't go to church with, like, the mentality. Or whatever religious institution you oh, believe yeah. in, like, Any anywhere you're at. Oh, yeah, religious place. But Even some are inappropriate. Like, I don't know if you'd be in a temple and just, like, <laughs> cross into the girl's side and be like, hey, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're Shomer? Yeah, I don't want to touch you anyway. Like, you just, it'd just be a whole thing, but. Yeah. No, but I'd say don't factor that out because I think that's a good place. Just don't go there with, like, high hopes of, like, I'm going to meet, like, the perfect Christian because that's not a perfect thing. person. Yeah. I don't know. Just. Yeah. Totally. This is what fun. about you? What do you think about that? We're, I'm a like, guy, so we think everywhere is the perfect place to meet. Oh, no, you're like, right. We'll that's not good. Like, <laughs> I know you're in the bathroom, but, <laughs> but yo, I was just wondering if, uh, hey, just slid in your DMs. Like, guys really have this idea, but you, and it's interesting because I feel like girls think more, girls think more about religion than guys do when it comes to dating. I don't know if a if a guy would think of that as a concept to think about or talk about. Well, let's let's ask the ladies. Is that one of like the first thing you factor religion? First factor? No. Mm -hmm. I see probably someone walking by that catches my eye. I'm like, oh. And then I'm like, okay, I'll talk to that person. And so, then I get to know them. So you go up and talk to the guy? No, no, no. So, I don't do that. You know what? <laughs> as, as much as we all want to say, like, dating's for a greater purpose or more sentimental things, physicality, and we heard it from the ladies, and maybe we've admitted this, too, before. Admitted this? Yo, like... Well, <laughs> Admitted this. Well, like, well, I just have. A I might make a whole relationship based on, yeah, but that ass though, like but, that could survive but see, into death do us part. But I base it on aura. I feel the aura because I have a sixth sense. I could just read spirit. So the aura, maybe I'm the outlier here. I I think aura over physicality, which is why yeah, it's I hard, definitely. Which is why it's energy. hard for me to to date online or ever use those apps because i can't feel your aura <laughs> wow why are you laughing at yeah. me <laughs> i'm laughing because yo this is such a good show it's just <laughs> it's a show like i love the show bro this is a good show this is such a good show if you guys look <laughs> because okay Okay, we've never been online dating apps, right? Okay, this is why I think it's fun. So, a couple months ago, one of our friends was showing us Tinder, and George was like giving this speech, can't find the aura, feel the aura. So then he was like, and then the more the guy talked about Tinder, the more George got curious. Next thing you know, George was swiping right and left for this guy for like 20 minutes straight, was like, nope. Yep. Ooh. And I was like, I, no, no, I didn't what go. Happened? Ooh, I was what sensing happened? energy. No, I'm an he energy reader. Said, Ooh, who's this one? And swiping. And I was like, that's not even your Tinder, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Wow. Hey, okay, I wanted to live vicariously. And, I, and he was like getting addicted, and we had to like take George away from Tinder. We had to rehab him off. So, and remember, it wasn't his own Tinder. He didn't go on a date with any single one I of these. I cared about was, no. I he, cared about the friend. I going, wanted to find a nice vibe. Because it was like partner. a game, like swiping right and left. Oh my goodness. And he just started playing like he was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just making she, this stuff up. Like, I never oh. made those sound effects. I was like, ooh, I didn't make those sound effects. Yeah, he did. And then he was like, oh, she looks fake. Oh, no, no. <laughs> All those words not. did not come out yeah, of my oh, mouth. She, oh, she, I don't even, she looks like she likes boxers over boxer briefs. She was like making <laughs> oh these full blown gosh. judgments on these people. I'm like, I thought you didn't like internet dating. He's like, I mean, it's not for me. <laughs> we were like, yeah, but you know, you're like causing him to have to talk to all these girls. You yeah. know, I, I was well. I was thinking as that all happened and those sound effects didn't happen. I was thinking How in my did head, the sound effects happen. You know, our parents' generation, and I feel commonly now, and this is a question for the two of you: Do you sometimes feel that real love existed more before or no longer exists? And my theory is that our parents have more of this real love because they had less options. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, what do you think? I think that makes, like, your question makes a lot of sense. Because in my, like, opinion, I think that that could have been a more possible factor. Because nowadays, like, a lot of people are in relationships, like, based off of someone they met online. And I feel like meeting someone online is just, like, it's not who you thought they'd be. You're like, oh, let me Photoshop my face first. Or it's like, you don't really know them, you know. It's just like, oh, it's a picture. And you're, like, reading them off from a picture. Like, oh, I like, thought you were the shy one. <laughs> No, what? she's a Yo, she's Shalom a party. was like, oh no, I don't want to be on the show. I'm shy. I'm like, oh. she's, All of a sudden, she's freaking Doctor Phil over here. She's <laughs> a party animal on the low. I just think that like our parents and like the generations before that had a better chance at real love because it's like they weren't they weren't like oh like look like, I'm meeting this person offline or oh I'm talking to them through Snapchat over. It's like no, like they actually like had to sit down at a restaurant or a coffee shop and really get yeah, to know the person. Yeah, but you know person. what? Every generation has that story, right? So there was True. the generation that was like. In my day, we used to have to write letters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I before still that, write be letters. Like, That's cute. I like I letters. <laughs> letters are cute. Yeah, cattle letters. and just go over there. And then it's like, and then you guys just had a horse and a horse and buggy. And it's like, and then you what guys had accent? cars and went to the movies. <laughs> and then after that, it was like, and then you, you guys had the telephone. We didn't have the telephone. It's like every generation. I mean, you can't stop technology. It's true. And yeah. You can't stop love. So we just modernized love mm -hmm. and yeah. the concept is if they had internet then they wouldn't have been writing letters either True. they would have been the same f boys we are like they <laughs> grandpa yeah but because they didn't have it did they learn to love more than we have learned i to think love. what they learned to do was stay together even if it was not working out longer than we have so you see a lot of older people who should have no business in being in relationships with one another because it's been so long and they have nothing else. Bro, I was at church and there was like a 90-year-old man and 90-year-old lady. And they like made them stand up and they gave them like an applause for being together. It was like they're like 80, 80 years. Like, it was like, like, they were no, married when they were 10. Yeah, it was literally <laughs> like 70-year anniversary. And then the lady like, you know, I, I help her out. I help her walk sometimes. And she's like, I can't stand him. Can't believe I've been with him <laughs> oh so long. God. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the real that shit. Is harsh, but bro. that's real. That's like real. Is the yeah. reality of it is we're just in a situation where it, it's twofold. On one hand, it's like if we don't like something, we just get rid of it. But on the on the same token, we don't even try to fix something to see if we like it enough to keep it. So it's something that we're going to have to do better with generations. And maybe that's where religion comes to play is, what do they say? A, a couple that prays together stays together. <laughs> the yeah. glue. It's, it's the, the glue. glue. It could be. It could be the glue, you know? I, I was like, yo, it's the couple that lays together, stays together. But no, I guess well, that's it's the blasphemous. That, <laughs> that prays together. So it's the concept of who do you find of equal yoke? Like someone who has that same path that you have. And you're walking. So I hope you guys find your paths. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so inspirational. Okay, Pastor Tehran. <laughs> you're welcome. <Wow>. The path. <laughs> Look how he's holding his hands. Like he's, bl he's blessing them. Right? Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> let it happen. <laughs> what is happening? Let, let it happen. Just let it happen. Nothing. You know what it is. <laughs> So listen, you know what it is. So if if you want people to find you, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Talia Prez Music. 
And where can they find your music? Anyway, my music's on Apple, Spotify. Just type in Talia Prez. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Is it on Tidal? On, no. Oh, well, no. You can just type in Talia Prez, West Coast. That's my newest song. So, oh, that's what's up. West Coast. In Shalom, if you want people to find you, doesn't matter. You're underage. So listen, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Um, we'll catch you guys. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think the conclusion is religion is important, as important as you want it to be. I don't know. It's, pretty, it's a pretty open-ended, nice conclusion. I like that. It's important yeah, it as you want it to be. We didn't be. find out. We didn't find yeah. out. Yeah, and like, that's okay. I mean, that's what we see in life. There really sometimes isn't a concrete answer to each his or her own. And we learned some very useful insight today that hopefully we can apply to Ron to become better gentlemen. 